All right, we are ready for uh, the next part here in our model creation. Um, I'm actually going to show you a different way here for uh, doing part uh, 4.1.1, just to give you a different idea as far as the concept from it. And from this one, I'm going to kind of look from the top down, and we're going to uh, do the, um, before we kind of did the additive, uh, now we're going to kind of do a subtractive method. So again, I'm going to go ahead with my new part. I'm still looking right now at part 4.1.1, and I'm going to do this more as a subtractive process um, once I build the initial outside feature. So, so let's go ahead with start a 2D sketch. Now on this one, I'm going to start on the uh, XZ plane here because I'm going to start with the top view looking down as I go. Now notice when I clicked on that, uh, my top view kind of got a skew up here in the view cube. So I'll just rotate that back around so that I'm looking at it. And in this case, um, I do kind of want to be centrally located on these two planes. So I will go ahead and select my uh, two point center rectangle tool. And I'm going to go with the main outside dimensions of this particular part. So as I look at it, um, I see that the uh, main width here and length is two and a half by four. So I'm just going to create this rectangle first in the center. Uh, this is going to be four inches here this way and 2.5 inches that way. So I just entered those in and I tabbed between the two of them. So that created that so that's all i need and all i want right now is just that sketch so i'll go ahead and hit finish sketch this comes out i can hit that home view cube button just to get to this down and now i'm going to extrude this going down so and we notice that the overall dimension here i have to add this up is one inch plus one and a half or two and a half inches so i'm going to go ahead and enter 2.5 as the distance uh, we'll go ahead and make this symmetrical here. So I'm going to just use that. So I have equal amounts both on the uh, XY plane. And pay attention now to these planes. So that's the XY plane we drew on the XZ plane. And so right now we're kind of uh, basically positioning this block equally on all three planes. So the exact center of gravity on this part is our origin point of zero comma zero. So we'll go ahead and hit okay with that. So we are done now. Now, now I've got my block and this is what I'm starting out with. So now it's just a matter of starting to cut material out and creating additional sketches. So and we can see here that we've got, uh, we'll start on the top sketch here. So I'm gonna start here on the top. I'm gonna uh, sketch on this plane. So this is the surface, the top surface of the part. Notice how it rotates in. Now, all I need to do now is change my uh, rectangle tool to the two point, and I'm going to fix both of these. So, uh, notice how I clicked on that upper corner. I'm going to come down, and we talked about how constraints. See, now notice how it snaps into place there on that line. So, not only are we uh, tying that into the two and a half dimension, but it's also constraining this sketch to the edge of our part here. The only thing we need to change now is what that dimension should be. Well, if we take a, a look at the overall dimension of four, and you see we're given another dimension of two inches and one inches, so we kind of know intuitively from looking at our drawing that this is going to be one inch here. So I'll hit enter on that one. And I'm gonna come over here and do the same thing over on this other side. So kind of let that lock in place and snap down. So, and this is also going to be one inch. All right. Now I've got both of those drawn. So I'll hit finish sketch. So, and we will go ahead and go to extrude. Now, because I have two closed surfaces here right now, it does not know which one I want. If I only had one closed feature uh, or closed sketch, then it would automatically pick up on that, but it doesn't. So, so I got to pick the uh, sketch that I want. Now notice, as I bring my cursor over, it highlights onto each one of them. So I'm going to click there, and it starts that extrusion. I'll go both of these at the same time, so it starts that exclusion. 
Now we know that right now this is going the wrong way and we want to flip that direction. So go right over here to the behavior part and flip that. We also know that we need to change that dimension to one inch from looking at our print. So there we go, that's one inch. Notice here where it says Boolean output. So we can change this to be a join or a cut or a intersect. In this case, we're cutting that material. We're subtracting and taking it away. So we're cutting that material out and hit OK. So that's that part. Now we've got that uh, little U-shape part to make. So I'm going to start a new 2D sketch. And in this case, I'm going to start right here on this surface. So I'll left click on that surface. And again, we're just using our rectangle tool. I come right in here. And I can set my dimensions exactly what they should be. I've got to do a little math here on my drawing because I know that I'm four inches overall, but I got half an inch on both sides of those. So, so that's going to be three inches. So I'm going to hit three. Then I will hit the tab key here so I can set whatever this uh, next dimension is. And taking a look at it, that should be half an inch. So 0.5 there. And we've got that now. So I've given that rectangle and my rectangle sketch, I've given it dimensions according to size, but I haven't located that square on the part yet. So I still got to give it a locational uh, dimension. So, And the easiest way to do that is to uh, come down here and I'll grab this edge of the rectangle sketch and I will move to the edge of the part, bring that in. and we know from looking at a print, so that should be 0.5 or half an inch. So I will place that. All right, now I've got that dimensioned, both dimensioned by size of rectangle as well as location. I don't have to locate anything here as far as the uh, other dimension or tie that in because I've already, that's tied into that bottom surface of it. So, so we're already locked in place. That's already been constrained with the dimensional constraint. So we're good on that. So I'm going to hit finish sketch. And now I'm going to extrude that too. Now, this time when I click extrude, again, I only have the one closed sketch or open sketch to kind of look at this. So it automatically picks up on it. It's also going the wrong way. So let's go ahead and flip that. Now, notice dimensionally, we know we could go ahead and set that distance to be the two and a half that we know it should be. But because we want this to go all the way through it, the better option right now is to click this through all. So, so I can click that through all. It'll automatically take it to the back side. Now the advantage of seeing this, and you'll learn this as you get more experience, the advantage is if we come in and change this, let's say at some point we decide that that uh, block needs to be three inches wide instead of two and a half inches. If we've just given that a distance, when we make that three inch change, it will still keep that cutout part at two and a half inches, the distance we said. So when we say through all, we can change that dimension to anything we want and we'll always take the cutout with it too. We can also use the uh, other feature here, which means two, and we could say, well, I want it to be from here to there and kind of click on that back surface and it, that would work as, as well depending on where that is. So you've got lots of different choices here that you can kind of make. Depends on what your preference is. I am done with that. So I'm sorry I'm yawning a little bit here this morning. So, so we've got that taken care of. Now just to confirm, let's rotate this around in my view cube just to kind of see what it look like. Yep, so looks pretty good to me. So let's go back to the front going to rotate to the top view. So come back to my home. There we go. All right. And lastly, the next thing we need to do here is to create that little projection that comes out. Again, it's on this surface. So we're going to do this the same way we did before. So just create a rectangle drawing here. So and we know that this dimension is uh, 1.5 going in that direction. Tab over and 0.25 here. So I've given it those uh, dimensional constraints due to the size of the rectangle I'm sketching, but I also now got to constrain it with location. So and so I got two locations to do here. So one is this location to this side edge, 
we see that that is a half an inch or 0.5. And then I'm also given a dimension that goes from here uh, to the top of that shoulder. And that is uh, three quarters of an inch, so uh, or 0.75. So 0.75, hit that. So now everything is dimensionally constrained. So I'll finish the sketch. We extrude that out. And again, this is going to be extruded 0.75 here as well. So let's go ahead and save this as file. Uh, we'll save as, I'm going to go and name this as part uh, 4.1.1. And we will say this was subtractive. So I'll just type in subtractive just to deviate from what we did before. Make sure that you're saving to the uh, uh, desktop when you do that. So that way we've got that there. And we are now finished with this part. Now before I go though, notice the number of steps here with the extrusions. I've got four extrusions uh, based on three different or four different sketches. So I'm going to also open up and this, some of this kind of goes to uh, just some efficiency when you're drawing. We'll back, go back and open up the other uh, part 1.1 that we did before. Notice here, on this one, I've only got two extrusions. So, so it's just a little bit of a difference in how you look at a drawing and how, you, uh, how efficient you might become. Both of these drawings are the exact same part. Just two different ways of drawing them. Neither one is better per se. I might you may give some bit of a defense that this one is better because it requires less clicks, so you're more efficient. But both of them give you the same result in the end, and both of them give you a good part uh, that you've drawn in design. So, so that's it for uh, this video. So. Again, we have just completed the uh, activity 4.1 drawing one here. As we go, we'll be back uh, to do the next drawing on this worksheet here shortly.